This is showing the sagittal section of the brain. All of you are neurosurgeons and many of the neurosurgeons, experienced neurosurgeons want to revise the brain again uh, like first year MBA student. <laughs> they want to see all the arteries and everything. So this is showing the part of the hemisection of the brain. You identify this corpus callosum, then uh, this is the whole of the thalamus. Uh, this is hypothalamus and you can see a distinct <coughs> groove. This is the hypothalamic sulcus coming from the interventricular foramen towards the cerebral aqueduct and uh, already you can see that this part of the optic chiasma, the lamina terminalis uh, coming to the genu of the corpus callosum. So this area is the third ventricle, this area is the third ventricle. Here you can see the stramedullaris thalami, this is the lateral border of the third ventricle and the uh, other part of the thalamus, uh, it goes to the body of the lateral ventricle, uh, other part of the thalamus here, it is forming the body of the lateral ventricle. So uh, we will see the different portions of the third ventricle here, the fornix is there, fornix is coming from the spinium of the corpus callosum and you can see the anterior column of the fornix and this is the anterior commissure, again this is the optic chiasma, lamina terminalis and the septum pellucidum has been ruptured to show the uh, part of the lateral ventricle. Here is the column of the fornix and this is interventricular foramen and very nicely you can see the choroid fissure and the choroid plexus within it, okay. So the anterior boundary of the third ventricle is the lamina terminalis, uh, then it goes here anterior commissure, the anterior column of the fornix and the roof is formed by the choroid plexus here, above the choroid plexus is the fornix, body of the fornix and most poster posteriorly is the part of the corpus callosum. The posterior boundary is uh, the pineal always goes out, so we have made a pineal, uh, this is the pineal with the stalk and there is a trigone here called avenular trigone that also is the boundary, this region actually is the posterior boundary of the third ventricle. The floor of the third ventricle is here, the structures in the floor of the interpeduncular fossa that is um, the optic chiasma, then you can see the mammillary bodies, I will show the mammillary bodies, uh, then tuber cinereum and the infernal stalk and this portion is the part of the subthalamus actually, it, this area is the hypothalamus and junction between the midbrain and the hypothalamus, so this area, this is the subthalamus that also forms the floor of the third ventricle. So here is the floor of the third ventricle what you can see the basilar artery is bifurcating the posterior cerebral artery the P1 segment and the optic nerve, optic chiasma, mammillary bodies can be nicely seen and this is the tuber cinereum with the pituitary stalk. The oncus is nicely visible here, the olfactory tracts, olfactory bulb, the gyrus rectus is uh, visible. The internal cavity artery is uh, with the uh, posterior communicating artery is seen here. Then uh, yes, here third ventricle stomach is already done, here you can see the floor, the optic chiasma, then the internal cavity artery here, the tuber cinereum with the ventricular stomach, the mammillary bodies. Uh, posterior powerful substance and part of the midbrain with the cerebral aqueduct junction between the third ventricle and uh, posterior commissure has already come here. This is the optic tract going to the lateral geniculate body. This is third ventricle, anterior commissure is here and some part of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle has come. This is the addition between the two thalami and you can see the interventricular foramen, the two colliculi are also seen and posterior horn of the lateral ventricle has come here and both the sides the choroid plexus is seen. This is the body of the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle leading to the, the midbrain you can see. Here is the choroid plexus from the third ventricle going to the lateral ventricle through the interventricular foramen. Here this part is towards the thalamus and uh, this is towards the body of the lentiform nucleus and uh, the corpus callosum section you can see 
Here both the third and lateral ventricles are seen. This is the thalamus, section of the thalamus, interthalamic adhesion and here is the third ventricle continues into the cerebral aqueduct below. This is the body of the lateral ventricle and uh, you can see the fornix here and this is the floor, the medial part of the floor of the body of the lateral ventricle is formed by the thalamus here. Here part of the thalamus is there and the choroid plexus is there and actually you can see a groove here for the fornix and here is the body of the cordon nucleus. In this junction lies the thalamostriate vein and the strata amenalis. So, this opening is the thalamostriate uh, vein and strata amenalis the white matter will be here. The internal capsule is here, you can see from the coronal radiata it is uh, going the internal capsule and the in the midbrain the substantia nigra part of the substantia nigra has run. The inferior horn of the lateral ventricle has also come here, here is the inferior horn and the cortex has folded here to form that uh, sea horse type of structure. So, this is the hippocampus, the floor of the lateral ventricle is formed by the hippocampus and this fissure is the choroidal fissure, the medial side of the or medial boundary of the inferior horn is formed by the choroidal fissure here, the anterior choroidal artery enters uh, through this fissure and it forms the choroid plexus in the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. So, here are the recesses of the third ventricle, the anterior recess is between the two anterior column of the third ventricle and above the anterior commissure you can see that one of the column is here, then this is the optic recess in the floor, infarnibular recess is there, hypothalamic sulcus is there. This is the suprapineal recess and pineal recess, these are the recesses of the third ventricle and, and I had a very good specimen where you can see the floor of the third ventricle and uh, this is the posterior commissure, these are the two colliculi. So, you can see the cerebral aqueduct, third ventricle is continuous in the cerebral aqueduct and here is the uh, hypophysial recess, the cross cerebri can be seen on the lateral side. This is the section where we have got uh, all the ventricles, this lateral ventricle, the quadrant nucleus actually all the neurosurgeons describe uh, this as the C. This is uh, one of the C of the quadrant nucleus, the head is here and tail goes to the roof of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Here is the thalamus and the junction between the thalamus and the quadrant nucleus you can see the thalamostriate vein is. Uh, and its tributaries and the strat terminals is here. So, this is the groove where the fornix lies, actually fornix has been removed. Fornix also uh, forms a C shaped structure. So, there are three C's actually. One of the C is formed by the lateral ventricle which is coming to the temporal lobe. The other C is the quadrant nucleus, C shaped nucleus and the third one is the fornix, I will show you the fornix and other sections you have seen the fornix also. So, the thalamostriate vein and this is the interventricular foramen, here it will join the choroid vein to form the internal cerebral vein and that will form here below the spinae of the corpus callosum uh, form the great cerebral vein. Here is the hypothalamic sulcus which is going to be continuous with the cerebral aqueduct and the fourth ventricle. This is the roof of the lateral ventricle. The corpus callosum is here and you can see the roofs, the anterior horn, this is the genu of the corpus callosum and this is the forceps major fibers and uh, some part of the body of the cordon nucleus has come. Here is the uh, roof of the third ventricle which is formed by that body of the fornix, the two thalami, the interventricular foramen, communication between the third ventricle and lateral ventricle. Actually anterior horn is more or less uh, triangular in shape. So, this is the body of the cordon nucleus and thalamus is here, the thalamostriate vein is here and this is the septum pellucidum from the corpus callosum and the fornix, the spinium of the corpus callosum. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle, the posterior horn, the lateral side you can see the internal capsule and these are the optic radiation fibers going to the occipital cortex and some yellow color fibers are there, those are called the tapetum actually. The fibers 
the forceps major fibers which crosses the optic radiation fibers they form the tapetum and here you will see two elevations one for the forceps major those are called the bulb of the posterior horn so here is the anterior horn the septum pellucidum this is the cavity of the septum pellucidum uh, you can see the anterior horn the head of the caudate nucleus interventricular foramen this is the thalamus area uh, this is head of the caudate nucleus and part of the thalamus has come here and internal capsule lentiform nucleus is here this is in cut uh, cross section septum pellucidum body of the caudate nucleus lentiform nucleus and this is the internal capsule this is the body of the lateral ventricle you can see the body of the caudate nucleus septum pellucidum and the choroid plexus over the thalamus the posterior horn with the choroid plexus the optic radiation fibers laterally and medially the calcaneus sulcus is here and that forms an elevation this is called the bulb of the posterior horn now here the same thing this is third ventricle lateral ventricle interventricular foramen the inferior horn the roof of the inferior horn here lies the tail of the caudate nucleus and the strata malis that tail of and here is the choroidal fissure and this is the hippocampus so this is the medial boundary of the inferior horn the floor is formed by the hippocampus uh, medially and the roof is uh, form the fibers of the internal capsule here so these fibers actually are the tapetal fibers here is the floor uh, you can see the hippocampus that spaw like appearance of the hippocampus uh, the pace hippocampus is here and this is the ammons horn so from the tail of the hippocampus here the fornix is formed and then it goes uh, to lie below the spinae or the corpus callosum this is the collateral trigon actually collateral sulcus forms an elevation here so the floor on the medial <coughs> side is formed by the hippocampus and laterally formed by the collateral elevation and the junctional region here between the inferior horn and the posterior horn is the collateral elevation this collateral trigon is here now you can see the hippocampus uh, is forming from the fimbria here then it is going just below the spinae or the corpus callosum this is the collateral trigon this is the hippocampus and pace hippocampi this is the inferior horn at the apex of the inferior horn you see this nucleus this gray matter this is the amygdala the typical almond shaped structure where the inferior horn ends it is 2.5 cm behind the tip of the temporal pole many people are interested to see the amygdala we have some sections i will show you the <coughs> amygdala this is a large picture of the amygdala at the tip of the inferior horn now see the fourth ventricle on the lateral side is uh, superior cerebellar peduncle this is the floor and this is in the midline this is one of the recess midline recess see the in the roof the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle is here here also uh, there is a membrane this kind of uh, structure is there but that is not visible so this is a branch of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery the lateral recess of the cerebellum is here and the floor is here the superior colliculus inferior colliculus and the fourth now the only now which comes from the dorsal surface this is the floor this is the median sulcus and laterally there is a sulcus this is the sulcus limitans see the two colliculi the facial colliculi are there the abducens nerve nucleus is there and over it the facial nerve forms genu this is the this is the sulcus limitans and the lower part you can see the fountain pen nib type of appearance this is the this the, the fancy name calamus scriptorius uh, is here okay so here is the floor and you can see in the upper part of the sulcus uh, limitans there is uh, a depression this is called superior fovea there is another depression here inferior fovea and here lies that uh, locus ceruleus uh, iron containing pigments are there in in this nucleus uh, this area is the vestibular area and lateral to the vestibular area this nucleus is the cochlear nucleus actually 
in this portion in the lower part lies the hypogosal nucleus and lateral to the hypogosal nucleus uh, this is the uh, vagal triangle and already you know this uh, this is one of the tract nucleus gracilis tractus gracilis is here inferior cerebellar peduncle this is the tractus cuneatus nucleus cuneatus uh, is here and uh, inferior cerebellar peduncle is forming the lateral boundary of the fourth ventricle and uh, so here is the position of the foramen of lasca and foramen of majendi will be in the midline so this is the the genu of the corpus callosum and the sprenium is here here is the fornix just below the sprenium of the corpus callosum it is coming and the columns of the fornix can be seen here and the probe is going the interventricular foramen this is the thalamus interthalamic adhesions uh, is here and this area is the hypothalamus and here is the optic chiasma so this is the floor of the third ventricle this is cerebral aqueduct the midbrain is here the pons is here and this is the anterocerebral artery this is uh, a2 segment of the anterocerebral artery up to the callosomarginal branch here this is the a2 uh, you can see the uh, roof of the fourth ventricle here and the cavity of the fourth ventricle this is in the midline the uh, lower part of the roof of the fourth ventricle is here third ventricle is uh, mostly damaged uh, here this is the third ventricular area the body of the fornix and this is the septum pellucidum this is the genu of the corpus callosum area forming the forces minor these two are the thalami and internal capsule is here anterior limb genu posterior limb is here this is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle this is the posterior horn and this is the junction between the inferior and posterior horn and this area is the collateral trigon and this elevation is formed by the collateral sulcus here below here you can see the optic nerve chiasma then the tuber sinarium and the opening here the two mammillary bodies and the the communicating arteries cross cerebri substantia nigra the red nucleus and the aqueduct cerebral aqueduct is here this specimen i brought because the the ventricle is dilated you can see the roof of the anterior horn body and the posterior horn and the septum pellucidum is there and the two parts of the corpus callosum you can see the ventricle is highly dilated the median sulcus the sulcus limitants the facial colliculus is here the superior fovea and the pigmented area here the inferior fovea is here so this triangle this nib shape area is the hypogosal triangle and lateral to it is the vagal triangle